Respected brothers and sisters, we've gathered here for the commemoration of the Shahada of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. May Allah reward you all. And now, today, we get a chance to, inshallah, look at the topic that we've chosen, which is leading a lifestyle of Imam Hussein or leading a Husseini life. So, tonight, inshallah, I want to talk about lifestyle and the importance of lifestyle. We recite Ziyarat Ashura. What do we say in that Ziyarat? Allahumma al Mahayana Mahya Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Wa mamatana mamata Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. O oh Allah, make our lives be the lives of the Ahlul Bayt. Make our death be the death of the Ahlul Bayt. Sometimes we focus on just the last part of that. We want to die like they did. I don't know if you've seen, sometimes there's this, this quote, this saying, you know, live like Ali and die like Hussein. I don't know if you've seen that before. Yeah. Now, I don't know where that came from, but it, of course, sure, you know, we want to live like Ali and we want to die like Hussein. But is there something wrong with living like Hussein and dying like Ali or living like Hassan and dying like, let's say, Imam Sajjad? Of course not. We know that all of these individuals are Nurun Wahid. And what we, that thing isn't from Hadith. That saying somebody came up with, it sounds nice, whatever it may be. But in Hadith, we're told what? Allahumma ja'al mahyana mahya Muhammad wa Muhammad wa mamatana mata Muhammad. Make our lives be the lives of Muhammad and his family. Make our death be their death. In one Hadith from Imam Sadiq, he says that do not be deceived by the way that people pray and they fast. Sometimes we think that, okay, Islam is about, you know, making sure we do our ibadat. Okay, that's very important. As-salatu umud the deen Salat is the pillar, it's the foundation. Fasting is wajib, kutib alaykum as and all these things. But the Imam says, don't be deceived by that. Don't think that Islam is summarized and summed up in just these practices. No. But rather you should go and see how are these people when it comes to what? Two things. One of them is Sidqul Hadith wa Ada'ul Amana. Meaning go and see what kind of people these are. Do are they people who have a, a do they have like a value of being truthful in their lives? Do they have a value of being trustworthy people in their lives? Those are the people who truly are Muslim. Those are the people who truly are our followers. And so many other hadith and, 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 and even ayat of the Qur'an which tell us that there's something about the way that we live our lives that we have to pay attention to. I want to give you an example from, from the society we live in. Because, you know, lifestyle is something... We, one, of the, one of the nice things that happened in recent times is that there's a lot more emphasis on your being able to choose your own lifestyle. A lot more, it's not like, you know, there's a lot, people are a lot more accepting these days if you choose, you know, to do things in a different way. You know, and maybe that can be abused for some people, but in a way it gives us a nice space. You know, we are able to say that, okay, well, I'm part of the American society, but I am choosing my own lifestyle. That's something which is good. But one of the things we have to be aware of is that even though we have our choice of lifestyle, we also are very much influenced by certain things in our society. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because if we want to be able to change, we have to, re we have, to have awareness. We have to know what's going on. I want to give you an example. It's something that I find interesting. It's the, that of architecture. If you compare Islamic architecture to what we have in this society, there's a lot of differences. And they've done some studies on this. They say that if when you when when you go and study the way that traditionally Muslims have built homes throughout the centuries, you see that there's three qualities that are demonstrated by the homes that they build in. They build. One of them is that they reflect the value of privacy. Number two is modesty, and number three is hospitality. Okay, privacy, how? They say that. In traditional Muslim homes, there would always be like four levels of, of privacy. One level of privacy for the individual themselves. There's certain things that we need to do, we need to be doing that in private. Then there's a level of privacy of the, the family itself, they want to be together. And then there's a level of privacy for 
the female members of the household, and then there's a level of privacy for the male members of the household. And it's amazing to what extent they went to to ensure that all four of these levels of privacy were maintained. Sometimes, for example, they would have, you know, traditionally they would have the outer courtyard. And part of that was to be able to uh, allow for this type of privacy to, be, to, to, to have that, you know, to make sure that's instituted. Then you have modesty. Traditionally, they would never build homes in a way where the windows and the doors would face one another, one home and the other home. They would be staggered. They would measure and they would see that, okay, if somebody is standing on the ground and we're up here, then how does the window have to be? How like low can it go in order to make sure that you know, the sight is blocked from somebody who is standing there? They would actually look at the angles and they would look at these types of things. And then hospitality, right? Because Islam emphasizes this idea that you know, your home is supposed to be something where it's not just for you. You share the blessings. You invite others and they bring even more barakah and risk to your home. So they would actually have these special areas that it would be, uh, you know, something they would spend time in making sure that those who came would feel very comfortable. And those of you who, if you travel and you go and spend time in some of these older homes, you, you can almost feel like a type of different sense in there. There's a peace that you feel. Even the way that they design them, I mean, I don't have time to talk about all the details, but even let's say you look and see how is it that the sun flows in and fills the rooms with light. There's a special attention given to that. It has a spiritual effect. And you compare that to home building, let's say, you know, in our society. Okay, what is it? You know, what, are the, what is reflected in the values there? There's a huge emphasis on, on what? On function, on, you know, doing things in a way where it's profitable, on doing things in like mass, mass production, and all these three things, privacy, no, okay, modesty, no, and then even hospitality these days, like you can barely squeeze like, you know, yourself in the living room, let alone another family, or if you want to make it, you know, a bigger thing, right? Why? Right? Why? Because there's certain values in the society which show themselves even in the way that homes are built. Now, brothers and sisters, like, this is an important discussion. Why? Because... When we start to look at other aspects of our life, we start to see that, you know what, I am Muslim, but am I even aware of how I should be leading my life? Or am I just taking what the normal way of doing things is and I'm applying them to my life? And maybe that's where I need to look and improve. We have examples of this. We have people, for example, who are depressed in our communities. It's a huge problem. And they come and they say that, well, what dua can we make? What special a'ama? Why am I, what is the sin that I'm committing that I'm doing my wajibat, I'm trying, but I'm still depressed? And sometimes the, those who, you know, they try to help them, they use their knowledge to address their problems. Those who look at their problems from a holistic perspective, they give them guidance. They say that the problem that they have it goes down to lifestyle choices. Why are they sleeping that way? Why are they eating that way? Why are they doing that to their bodies? If they were to pay more attention, if they, if they didn't just do what everyone else does, they would realize that these are the problems, these are the causes for the problems that they're facing. It goes back to what? Lifestyle choices. We have a huge problem in a community of families breaking up. Sometimes it's shocking years after the marriage you know, happens and you know, they're talking about like separating, what's going on here? Right? And you go and you say, okay, they're both practicing, they're both committed. And you see that, well, what lifestyle do they lead? What kind of conversation do they have? Do they have conversations at home? How do they spend time together at dinner time? Do they spend time or is it time that's spent everyone on their own device? Right? These are things which might seem trivial, but, trivial, but these are things which can break a relationship. And then we realize, well, oh, you know what? I didn't realize. I was just taking the predominant lifestyle that I learned from the society I live in, and I was applying that to my life, and I was thinking that that's the way to do things. 